Welcome geometry students to the lesson for 8.2. It can be found on these pages in your book. And the only real new vocabulary term today, geometric mean. We're going to learn what that is all about. And we're going to still use the stuff we learned from 8.1, of course, about ratios and proportions. And so we're going to put that all into practice here. Example 1, we're getting right into it today with this one. So here is a picture that I want you to draw draw something like this. So kind of a big triangle. Make that part vertical. We'll make this part go down a little bit farther here. This is not necessarily drawn to scale though, so something like that. And then I want you to draw, this is just about vertical, so I, I didn't draw that perfectly there, but I want you to draw a line right about there that is parallel to this line. So I'm going to grab my tool here and draw something in like that. So again, not this is not going to be to scale necessarily, um, but something like that will do it for you. Okay, and let's call this T. Let's call this point R, U, N, and K. Ha! That's where my pictures are coming from. Three different kinds of trunks. Um, fun thing about the English language, sometimes confusing though too, that the same word can mean three different things there. Uh, so maybe you can even think of another thing that trunk can stand for. 36 is going to be the length from U to T. 36 that is. There we go. Sorry, I'm going over the title of your notes there a little bit, but that's going to be 36. This is going to be 12 from R to T. UN, let's say that is 16. Uh, and then this is X down here, we're going to call that X. So, what's going on with this picture? This is going to be true in this picture. So, in this picture, I'm going to say we can assume the following is true that R, U R, sorry, U R over R T equals U N over N K. In other words, this is proportional to this, UR divided by RT. That ratio, that fraction, is equal to whatever this fraction is. Those things are going to be equal to each other. And we're going to find what NK is. So this is given to us as saying this has to be true. We're saying that UR, this part right here, divided by RT, this part right here, equals UN this part divided by nk this part and so we can set up an equation here so here's my solution so I'm going to start with just the plain old letters given to us just rewrite that down so ur over rt equals un over nk now let's replace them with what we know they equal and so ur well I look at that and the number isn't right there but this is 36 from here to here and this is 12 from here to here so what's left over? If 12 is here, the whole thing is 36, you would do 36 minus 12 and get 24. So to start though, let's just put 36 minus 12 and we'll simplify that in the next step. So that's what UR is, 36 minus 12. RT clearly is 12 from the picture. UN, that is 16 from the picture. And NK we're calling X. So NK we're saying is X. So this becomes 24 over 12 equals 16 over x. And at that point, let's get out our different color and let's show cross multiplication in the different color. So we can do this here. I'm going to show you an easier way to do this that sometimes works. Sometimes you have to do the cross multiplication, but I'll show you the what is in this case the slightly harder way or the one extra step way for this one. But 24 times x is 24x, 12 times 16. That would be 192. From that point, you would divide by 24 to get your answer of x equals 192 divided by 24 is 8. And x is the same thing as nk, which is what we wanted to find. So you could say nk is equal to 8. And so the, the easier way that I promised to tell you about here, could you have said that 24 divided by 12, well, that's two and so whatever x is would also have to be two yeah that would work in this case as well so I know 24 over 12 is two 
I don't know, 16 over 8 would also equal 2. So know that at least, that hey, this is just saying this fraction equals this fraction. So whatever this equals better be the same thing as whatever this is. But you can still cross multiply. Sometimes it's not as easy to see as that. So I wanted to do that the long way. But you can if it's capable or if you're capable of doing it the shorter way. And you could skip this step, I feel. Uh, totally legitimately skip that step in a problem like that. Example two, though, before we get into that, we had that new vocabulary term. Let's define that right up here. So the geometric mean, what does the geometric mean? What is that all about? The geometric mean of two numbers is, how do we find it? It is the square root of their product. Product just means multiply when it comes to math. So of their product, the square root of their product. So the arithmetic mean, that's a fancy way of saying the arithmetic average. Mean just means kind of average. So with the arithmetic mean, the mean that we're used to in math, we add them up and divide by how many numbers there are. Well, with the geometric mean, we're going to, instead of add, we're going to multiply and then take the square root instead of add them and divide by how many numbers there are. So let's check out a couple examples of geometric means. So find the geometric mean I was going to say of the following, but we can leave that out. So find the geometric mean and I'll just put colon there. So two parts. We'll do two different examples. 9 and 16 first of all. What's the geometric mean of 9 and 16? So what do we have to do? We're taking the square root of their product. So we're just multiplying these together. So it's 9 times 16 and taking the square root of that. That's all you have to do with a geometric mean. So we have the square root of 9 times 16 is 144. This one happens to be a perfect square. So it's a nice, clean, easy answer, 12. And then we'll do one that's a little tougher than that, 32 and 7. So 32 and 7. Same thing, though, same thing to start. The square root of their product. So the square root of 32 times 7. That's the square root of, this would be 224 if you multiply that together. And so from there, think of back to the, the list of perfect squares. You're trying to find what the biggest number is that goes into here, the biggest perfect square that goes into there. You can check things. So let's check that. Let's do that with a calculator. And let's see what we get here. So 224 divided by 4 is the perfect, first perfect square. So that goes into there. Let's see if there's a bigger one, though. So I know that I could do 4 times 56. That's one possibility. Let's try 224. If I look at that, 224, I notice that these digits, this is a little trick here, but the digits add up to 8, and that's not divisible by 9. So I know I don't even have to check 9. I am going to try 16, though. So if the numbers are added up, the digits are divisible by 9, the number is divisible by 9 itself. If they're not, it's not. But I'm going to check 16. Does that work? Yeah, 16 times 14 is going to work as well. And then 14 would just be 7 times 2, so there would be no more perfect squares going into that. So I feel like I'm good to go then. So this would be 16 times 14. The 16 can get pulled out as a 4, and you're left with 4 radical 14. 14 is just 2 times 7, so nothing else can get pulled out of the square root. So this is simplified radical form. If it's possible to do that, to take a square root part out, you can do that, or you need to do that. 224, if you wanted to use that factor tree way instead, if you're more comfortable with that, go to, go go ahead and totally do that, and uh, you'll be fine. You'll get the answer correct either way, as long as you remember what you're doing there. So if you're in class, ask me in class how to do that. Re remind me if you need some extra help seeing both ways and what you like better. So remember, though, you're checking numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, those perfect squares, which is the biggest one that goes into there. And then to finish off this lesson, a third example, we're going to go to Thailand. So there's some, these are some pictures from my trip to Thailand. I was there for about a month, and yep, I'm dating myself here. 2008, I was there 
for a month in 2008. An incredible place. If you ever get a chance to go visit Thailand, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Suppose you are taking $750 with you. We're saying this is just like spending money. So suppose you're taking $750 with you on a trip to Thailand. And do the beaches actually look like that in Thailand? Some places, yes, this was. Whew, wow, incredible beach. Do monkeys actually take popcorn straight from your hand in the wild? Yes, yes, they do. Do elephants play soccer in Thailand? They sure do. Do people ride little motorcycles around everywhere, little scooters around everywhere? Is that the biggest mode of transportation? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, so cool place. Trip to Thailand. Their currency there their currency is bot. B A H T. That's how you spell that. Their currency is called bot. Instead of dollars, they have bot. Alright, and when you arrive, well they're not gonna take take your American money most places. Or whatever kind of whatever country you're coming from, I guess, but We'll assume it's American dollars. So when you arrive, you find out that, let's say, your friend exchanged hundred and twenty dollars. Or thirty-six hundred, three thousand six hundred bot. And if you exchange all your money how much should you get? So we're gonna assume that the rate of exchange stays the same. It's not going to change for your friend compared to you. It's going to be that same exchange rate. So how much should you get at the same exchange rate? And so it looks like, yeah, our dollar is worth more in terms of their bot. It's definitely more than one bot per dollar. So we're going to see exactly what that is. So let's say, think of it like this. So here's my solution. So LN, that is hideous looking. Let's try that again. S O L N. Okay. So the ratio, you have to compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. Uh, you may have heard that statement or phrase before. You have to compare something on the top, something on the bottom in the same way, all the way across. So we're going to say the ratio, this is just to help us out right now. This isn't something over here that you have to do later. But we're going to say the ratio is bot to dollars. We're going to keep that consistent all the way across in our proportion. If we flip-flop things one place and then not the other place, then our ratio is not going to be correct. It's going to get messed up. So we're going to say this is you and this is your friend over here. So your friend bot to dollars ratio was 600 or bot to dollars fraction. The ratio should have the same unit. So technically I want to say this is just a, a fraction here. So 3600 bot to $120. So your ratio, sorry, your fraction, again ratios should have the same units, so your fraction, it's got different units here, would be, you don't know how many bots or how much bot you're going to get, so X bot to $750, it's in that same, same, uh, same way, compared in the same way, so bot to dollars, bot to dollars, we're making that comparison, different color time, let's do that in different color and then from there let's see what we got left so I'm gonna take off the units now this will be 120 X for it's like 120 dollars times bot so bot dollars 
equals this times this ends up being two million seven hundred thousand bot dollars but I'm leaving that out so now I've got bot dollars to bot dollars it sounds ridiculous but same thing here to here so now I can make this comparison I'm going to divide by 120 so I'm basically dividing by dollars so if I divide bot dollars by dollars I'm left with bot the dollars will cancel out I'm not writing all that here uh, but think of it that way so this will cancel out with this I'm left with x equals and then this I would put that into a calculator and so let's see what we get when we do that hello uh, this would be two million seven hundred thousand one more there divided by 120 and you get twenty two thousand five hundred baht and if you're careful with your zeros it should make sense in the end here so it's 22,500 baht. If your friend got 120 for 3,600, that's about uh, about five times more, a little more than five times as much. And so this is a little more than five times as much as that. That seems to be reasonable. Uh, so I would think of it like that. So could you do it this way? Yes. Could you also compare things in... Uh, or could you have done this? I'm not going to write this down, but could you have done this divided by 120 and found out what what it was bought to one dollar? Could you do that like that too? So let's just do that here for argument's sake. So 3600 divided by 120, it would be 30 bought to one dollar if you do that. So if you think of it like that, you can take 30 bought to one dollar. You could just multiply your 30 times the 750 and you would get the same thing that way too. So that's basically what we did do here. Uh, we're just doing the cross multiplication. So if that made sense to you, you could do the problem that way. If not though, set up the proportion and work it out the one step longer way. It really doesn't take much more effort. Okay, that'll do it for this lesson and I will catch you guys later.